Hey guys, this is Tartolyong and in this video, you will see 10 individual outplays and tricks that you might have missed on the International 10. Ame is casually farming in lane, gets jumped by two heroes, uses Sunder, and managed to solo kill one of them. How did a pro player just die to the simpler Sunder? When a carry is farming in his lane alone, it is normal to pressure him or at least for some spells. In this case, the Sunder. A single Sunder wouldn't usually get a kill, but this is actually a bait set up by Ami as he's farming on top of this red line. This red line represents the tower attack range. Ami could have Sundered, used Refraction, used Stick or Verify to stay alive at any point of time. But Ami being extremely calm, he knows that he is not going to die due to Stick and Verifier so he is trying to bait the enemy into the red line. Tren realized that he is not using anything so he assumed that he did not have Sunder skilled which is a very common play and stepped in front to try and body block. But he got baited and died. Abed spotted a spectral dagger on the top lane, he tp top with an invis rune and walked past the creep wave and started flying into the fog of war without any vision and found a spectre. How did he find this spectre? Spectral dagger lasts for 12 seconds. Do not trust this description, it is 12 seconds. Then he started chasing for about 12 seconds and spotted a neutral camp that recently died. Corpse lasts for about 5 seconds, so he calculated how far a spectre can escape in less than 5 seconds. So he zipped 5 seconds ahead for vision and found a spectre. Mira is trying to stop the lion's pull. The lion managed to get one creep, so Mira stands in the fog for the experience. The creep died and Mira hits level 3, while the lion is level 1. If you are this weaver and I tell you that you can kill this lion, how would you do it? You can pause the video and figure it out. So this is how Mira does it. Skill Gemini attack with the 1-1-1 build. He waited for the neutral creep to hit the lion before hitting the lion himself. Because if the weaver hit the lion first, the neutral creep will aggro towards the weaver. So he waited for the neutral creep to hit the lion, Gemini attack, then Sukushi forward and predict where the lion is going to juke him next. The lion takes another attack from the neutral creep and Mira finish off the kill. Did you ever thought you can make use of neutral creep's auto attack to get a kill? Nothing to say, always tend to find solo kills against top mid laners by making use of high movement speed heroes and lane shoving. He starts by nuking the wave even when he gets no creeps. This is not a common move to just randomly nuke the wave, but it is to prep a kill. The first nuke reduces the overall health of the entire creep wave, and the second one will shove the lane into the opposing mid laner. Because of the high movement speed, he outruns the enemy and gets the kill. In another game, he's playing DK vs Storm, 310 movement speed vs 285. He did the exact same thing, brief fire on the Storm and the wave without getting any creeps. When the lane is pushing, he ignores his own range creep and went for a stun. Attack and body block to allow the whole wave to attack the Storm as well. Chase with high movement speed and finish with another new. Elder Titan is one of the most contested picks in TI-10 and this is how Stinger destroys the lane from the first wave. He stands outside the Roshan pit, places the spirit on this tree and walk top while sending the spirit mid. The spirit collects damage from the mid wave and the hero and expires just in time for the spirit to fly back top and collect the damage from his lane. This gave him enough damage to single-handedly beat the offlaners out of lane. Ame was clearing some camps with Monkey as he sees a Darkseer coming to lane. He ignores the creep, jumped towards the intersection, and became a tree. After killing Rubik's courier, Ame calculated that his boots will reach him before Scofield can walk over to kill it, but here comes the Fisher block on the courier. 
Yup, so always set up really nice nighttime vision and give team secret an early advantage. He did not plan the night vision when the night hits, but way before the night comes. Throughout the whole laning phase, he tends to stick really close to the position 5 player so that he can constantly check his items. Wards are not available in the position 5 inventory, so he knows that if he runs into the enemy jungle and ward during nighttime, the enemy will know that he is warding but do not know where he has warded. Nighttime arrived, he planted some deep and unusual wards. Then, before he shows on the map, he repositioned himself on the lower part of the river and allowed the enemy to check his items. The Ever Titan assumed that he planted on the bottom side river because he showed mid, but the ward is too deep for the sentry. The Legion commander tried to guess the jungle ward and gets nothing. Miposhka, however, studied Team Secret really well and made a perfect counterplay. He sent himself a ward before nighttime and played close under tower so Yapso cannot check his items. Then he sneakily plant a ward in his own jungle before nighttime, and this ward is going to spot Yapso running in and help him find the ward. Yapso then showed mid, so he positioned himself mid and prepared for the counter ward. He noticed that the wolves aggroed towards him before seeing the wolves, so this means the heal is warded. The defensive ward did not spot Yapso warding, but spot Yapso walking past without any wards on him, and this means that the wards are not planted within vision. Then he tracks the path of Yapso's movement and found another ward. First night time, all wards rewarded and Secret have no moves against Spirit with superior night vision. It is about to be 6 minutes and you walk towards the rune. You spotted the bane that is about to sleep you and steal your rune. You know that the enemy hasn't planned a ward at mid yet. Now what would you do here? Take a few seconds and think about how you're going to outplay this bane and take the rune if it spawns top. And let me give you a clue, you do not need sleight of face to do this. Are you ready? Okay, Lim is going to use this tree to fog the bane and prevent the animation of the nightmare and take the rune. This is how it looks like from the Bane's perspective. Did you thought about this? Let me know in the comments. Shout out to all channel members for supporting the channel. If you like more short form content, you can follow my Instagram. If you want to chat with the community, you can join my Discord. Thank you for listening to the end of the video. If you enjoyed my dollar to content, do like, subscribe. I'll see you next time.